This chapter looks at questions when a particle is traveling along a curved path. Normally, we would write f equals ma with respect to rectangular coordinate axes. So all the x-axis forces or all the y-axis forces added together would equal the mass times the acceleration in the x-axis or y-axis direction. In this chapter, instead of those axes, we're looking at tangential, normal, and binormal directions. So instead of x, y, z, we have t and b. So we say that forces in the tangential direction added together is equal to mass times tangential acceleration. And forces in the normal direction added together is equal to mass times normal acceleration. For the binormal direction, there is a bit of a difference, which is the forces added together in the binormal direction is equal to zero. Everything else is pretty much the same. A quick recap. To find normal acceleration, remember that it's velocity squared over the radius. Or if an equation representing the curve is given, we need to use the radius of curvature equation. If you aren't too familiar with this, or you forgot about normal and tangential accelerations, or equations of motion, please see the two videos linked in the description below. So let's get started with some examples, and by the end, you should be able to solve many, if not all the problems you face in this chapter. So in this question, we need to find the maximum speed the girl can have before she slips off the merry-go-round. Now this question has a lot of text and seems like it's going to be long, but it won't be. Let's draw a free body diagram because it'll make things easier. When we draw the diagram, we are just looking at the girl. So we have the weight, which is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We got the normal force, which will be equal to the weight in this case. And we got the frictional force, which will be the normal force multiplied by the coefficient of static friction. The reason why the normal force is equal to the weight of the girl can be shown by writing an equation for the binormal direction. Remember, forces added in the binormal direction is equal to zero. Since the girl is sitting, the only force affecting her is the weight and the normal force, which means the normal force is equal to the weight. To find the answer to this question, we only need to consider the normal axis since the question said the tangential component of acceleration can be neglected. Let's write our equation of motion. So we only have the frictional force on the left side of the equation. The frictional force is trying to keep the girl from slipping off, so that is pointing towards the center of the merry-go-round. And on the other side, we have the mass multiplied by the normal acceleration. Again, remember normal acceleration is velocity squared divided by the radius, which in this case is 1.5 meters. Let's solve for velocity, and that's our answer. Let's look at another question. In this problem, we need to find the frictional force and the normal force that is exerted onto the road by the car. So in this question, we are given an equation representing the curve. That means we need to use the radius of curvature equation. For that, we need the first and second derivative. That's going to be our first step. So let's take the first derivative of our equation. Now let's take the second derivative. Let's plug in the derivatives we found into our radius of curvature equation. We are trying to find the radius when x equals 80 meters, so we will plug in 80 meters for x. Solving gives us the radius of curvature. Since we are looking at an instantaneous point in time, we can actually place our coordinate system along the tangent. The question is, what is the angle that the tangent makes with the x-axis? Because we will need that to break the weight into components. For that, we can use tan theta. Remember from math class how taking the first derivative of an equation gives us the slope? Well, we can find the angle by using tan theta and an x value of 80 meters. In other words, we can figure out the angle at any given instance. This will be useful for a lot of questions in this chapter where you need to find an angle at an instantaneous point when an equation is given for the curve. Since we're trying to find the angle at x equals 80 meters, we can plug it in and solve. The negative value simply means it's below the x-axis, but when we apply it to break the weight into components, we can use the positive value. Now we can get to the core of the problem. First, the car has a mass of 0.8 megagrams, which is 800 kilograms. Keeping that in mind, let's draw the free body diagram with the normal and tangential axes. We have the weight, frictional force, the normal force, and normal acceleration. Remember, normal acceleration always points towards the center of the curve. In the question, it says the car is traveling at a constant velocity, which means there is no tangential acceleration. Now for our equations of motion. First, for the tangential axis. So we have the t component of weight, the friction, and that's equal to the mass times acceleration. 
But again, there is no tangential acceleration, so it's zero. Because we placed our coordinate system along the tangent, we only have to break the weight into components. The rest we can leave as is. Let's solve for friction. Now we can write another equation of motion for the normal axis. It's important to make sure we get our positive and negative signs correct, so be mindful of this. We have the end component of weight and the normal force which is equal to the mass multiplied by the normal acceleration. Normal acceleration is velocity squared over the radius, and remember, normal acceleration always points towards the center of the curve, which means it's negative due to the side we picked to be positive. Let's solve for the normal force. Those are our answers. In this question, we need to figure out the tension in the cord and the reaction which the cone exerts on the block. In other words, the normal force. We can ignore friction and the size of the block. So we can see that the block is hanging sort of halfway through the cone. So the first step is to figure out the radius of the cone at the location where the box is. We need that to find the normal acceleration. So how can we find it? We can use triangle ratios. I will draw the right angle triangle. Notice how we have a height of 400 millimeters and a base of 300 millimeters. Which means the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle is 500 millimeters. We got that using the Pythagorean theorem. Now if the distance from the top to the location of the box is 200 millimeters, what would be the radius? Well, we can write a ratio like this. Let's solve for the radius. Setting that aside, we can move on to drawing a free body diagram. It's important to realize that the triangle we came up with, the 3-4-5 triangle ratio, apply to pretty much every force that we will draw out. The reason being, the box is laying along the side of the cone, and we're placing the coordinate system along the horizontal axis of the cone. This time, our math will be a bit messy since most of the forces will not actually lie directly on the same axes. So we have the tension, the weight, and the normal force. The weight is straight down along the binormal axis, so we don't need to break it into components. We can now write our equations of motion. The first will be for normal axis forces. So we have the end component of tension, the end component of the normal force, and that is equal to mass times the normal acceleration. Remember to use meters for the lengths. Let's leave that for now and write another equation for the binormal axis forces. Remember, this one adds up to zero. So we have the binormal component of tension, the binormal component of the normal force, the weight, and all of that is equal to zero. We now have two equations with two unknowns, so you can solve them any way you like. Solving gives us the tension and the normal force. Those are our answers. Everything in this chapter is similar to what you covered before. We're still writing f equals ma, but instead of x, y, z coordinates, we're using t and b. I hope this video helped you gain a better understanding of this chapter. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your studies.